Naming your kid is perhaps the most important decision you'll ever make when it comes to naming something. And you have to take that decision fucking seriously. You can't just fuck around and call your kid something stupid like pirate or banjo or kid or something like that, right? You need to make sure you give your kid a nice name. Because if you don't, what's going to happen? Exactly. Your kids are going to get bullied. So to help you to be a good parent and to make sure your kids don't get bullied all because you gave them a shit name, I present to you Grade A Under A's Guide to Not Giving Your Kids a Shit Name. Right, so to help me out with this exercise, I've gone and found a local school bully and he's going to help me out with this. Is that alright mate? Yeah mate. Right, so as an example to show you what I mean, for God's sake, man, do not call your kid Ray. Ray gay? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Other names that you can no longer use anymore include Patrick, you're a fat dick, Matt, you twat, and Dick. Why would you call your kid Dick? It's literally a fucking insult. You don't even have to do anything to turn your kid's name into a rude word because it's already a rude word. You wouldn't call your son bastard, would you? Exactly. So why would you call him Dick? By the way, right, in case you didn't know this, the name Dick is a shortened version of the name Richard. What? How? How the fuck does Richard go to Dick? The name Christopher gets shortened to Chris. Right, piss? The name Matthew gets shortened to Matt. You right, twat? But how the fuck does the name Richard get shortened to Dick? They don't even start with the same letter. If you have a kid called Richard and you want to shorten his name, why, don't you, why didn't you call him Rich? Right, bitch. All right, fair enough. But I'd much rather be called Rich than be called Dick. To be called Rich is actually a good thing. And while Rich is a good thing, Dick isn't. Mm, I don't know, Grade. I'd have to disagree with you there. Fuck off, Nicole. Now listen, I'm going to say this just very quickly and I'm not going to stay on this point for too long because I know some people are going to start crying, Oh my God, Grade, you're a racist. But I need to point this out, all right? You can't always do this, but if you can, try and make sure your kid's name doesn't mean something rude in a country that you might end up living in. For example, right, when I was in uni, no bullshit, there was a kid studying there whose name and picture we saw on a bulletin board called Cock Chewy. <laughs> Cock Chewy. I don't give a fuck how politically correct you are and how overly sensitive you are to this kind of stuff, right? But this is undeniable. That's a fucking unfortunate name. Chewy Cock. And for fuck's sake, man, don't name your kid gay. That's literally a name. Gay. Oh, come on, man. You might think, ah, oh, fuck off, grade. I've never seen anyone called gay. I went on IMDb and had a quick search, right? Look how all the gays are found in the movie industry. And look at this. Gay McDonald. That's what you call a homosexual restaurant. You don't call your kid that. Now, listen, right? All of the rules that I've said so far, pretty fucking obvious. Do you know what I mean? But... There's one group of people who either don't know or don't give a fuck about any of these rules, right? And that group of people is celebrities. For some reason, right, celebrities have a habit of giving their kids some of the fucking dumbest, absolute shittest names I've ever heard. Do you remember at the start of the video when I said you can't just call your kids some dumb shit like pirate or banjo or kid, right? Well, some celebrities already have. The lead singer of the band Korn called his kid Pirate, Rachel Griffiths called her kid Banjo, and David Duchovny actually called his kid... Kid. Why do you bastards hate your kids that fucking much? And if you think these are bad, right? These are fucking nothing. Magician Penn Gillette called his kid Moxie Crime Fire. Sylvester Stallone called his kid Sage Moonblood. Evil Jared Hasselhoff of the Bloodhound Gang called his son Foxtrot Uniform Charlie Kilo and Frank Zappa called two of his kids Moon Unit and Diva Thin Muffin. What the fuck are these names? You are fucking horrible people and you're horrible parents. 
How does someone come up with names that fucking random? Oh my god, look how cute he is. What should we call him? One second. Romantic. Conilingus. Discharge. And fuck it, right? When random words aren't random enough, just make up words and mix them in with the other random words you've already picked out. Gwen Stefani did just that and called her kid Zuma Nestor Rock and Paula Yates called her kid, listen, Heavenly Hirani Tiger Lily. <laughs> what? What the fu- But listen, in a sense, right, I can kind of see where the parents are coming from. For example, Heavenly Hirani Tiger Lily, whilst they do sound stupid, they still sound namish. do you know what I mean? It sounds kind of hippie and spiritual. But some celebrities give their kids names that legit just sound fucking stupid. Shannon Sossaman called her kid fucking audio science. Jason Lee not only called his kid pilot inspector, but he spelt it wrong. And maybe worst of all, actor Rob Morrow called his kid two, making the kid's name tomorrow. fuck is wrong with you, Rob? You absolute retard. With a name like that, you might as well go to your son's school and force all the kids to bully him. But listen, everything you've heard up until now is nothing, alright? The worst naming that I've ever seen belongs to a channel right here on YouTube, and they honestly have the fucking stupidest, shittest names given to the people you see in the video I've ever seen in my fucking life. I swear to God. And that channel is... ME! Get up in it. Start a rub. According to dictionary.com, a phobia is defined as a persistent irrational fear of a specific object, activity or situation that leads to a compelling desire to avoid it. Okay? Now listen, that's a decent definition, right? But, I don't like the use of that word irrational. Now listen, I don't like spiders, right? I love these ones, but I hate these fast ones, right? I hate them, can't stand them. Now I wouldn't say that I'm frightened of them, right? But I don't like them. So people would class me as arachnophobic, alright? So I guess I have a phobia, which is an irrational fear, right? So I guess that makes me irrational, which is fine, right? But let's quickly just have a look at these. Here's a spider that can kill you with just a bite, okay? Here's a spider that can make your leg rot and fall off with just a bite. And here's a spider whose bite will give you a four hour long painful erection and will then kill you, okay? Now here's my problem. Since I'm not a fucking arachnologist, I am not particularly good at being able to tell apart different spider species. Call me racist, but they all look alike to me. Because of this, I can't tell the difference between this harmless spider and this deadly one. So because there's a chance that any given spider I see on my wall is the boner death one, I'd rather just stay away from all of them, to be perfectly honest, right? I don't see that as irrational at all, dictionary.com. My fear of death by hard-on seems pretty fucking rational to me. By the way, why does each phobia have a Latin-derived name for it? Like, if you're afraid of snakes, you are said to suffer from ophidiophobia. Now, why does the word ophidiophobic even exist? Why can't you just say you're scared of snakes, man? My theory, right? It's just for those idiots who like to use big fancy words and come across as smart and educated. That's my guess, right? It's just so people can do stupid things like, Oh, me? I'm afraid of snakes. <laughs> scared of snakes? <laughs> you simpleton grade. I think you find the term you're looking for is ophidiophobic. Yeah. Uh, I think, right, these phobia words are made purely to take the piss out of you and to mock you, right? Great, you're lying, mate. You think I'm lying? I'm not lying. Right, let me show you, okay? This is an actual example, right? The name given to the phobia of long words is Hippopotomonstrosis quipedaliophobia. Do you see what I'm saying? They're taking the piss, man. There's no way that that wasn't intentionally chosen to be so fucking long. 
That's cruel, man. It's kind of like how the word lisp has the letter S in it. It's piss take, isn't it? And do you know what a fear of vowels is called? Phobia. Okay, that last one's a really bad joke, right? But the long words one is real. They're just taking the piss, man. Big wheels, Cadillac grill. Okay, sorry, right? But I can't let go of that whole irrational thing. What's wrong with you, dictionary.com? That's a pretty big blanket statement to make, mate. That all phobias are irrational. Have you not seen what spiders look like, for fuck's sake? They don't all look like this, you know. Most of them look like this, man. Crikey, they're powerful animals. Has she got a set of fangs on her or what? Stop there, babe. Stop there. Yeah. She's a beautiful Sheila, actually. No, she's not. Right? She's disgusting. Now listen, me wanting to avoid these things is not irrational, okay? Being scared of rabbits, that would be pretty fucking irrational, okay? Being scared of Gabby Epstein, you're fucking mental. But things like ballistophobia and virginityphobia, nothing irrational about them, is there? If you're not scared of being shot or raped, then I should be scared of you for fuck's sake. Arachnophobia isn't irrational, right? It's normal. Like, who wants to be anywhere near this thing? But shit, do you know what? Maybe I've got a biased view on all of this. So why don't you tell me who's crazier, right? Is it me for wanting this thing to be as far away from me as possible? Or this fucking madman? <laughs> yeah, thought so. Ahem, <laughs> <laughs> alright. Some phrases in the English language, they make, like, no sense, right? So to prevent you from sounding like an idiot in front of your friends or your peers, I'm gonna tell you some of the ones that you should avoid. Pot calling the kettle black. Now listen, people don't really use this on a daily basis, right? But it is very commonly used. The phrase basically means, oh, you're a bit of a hypocrite. But here's the thing, right? Pots aren't black. And neither are kettles. Like, look, look at these, right? Do these look black to you? Like, even a little? No, they don't. They're not even remotely black, man. Right, so what should the phrase be? Charlie Murphy calling Wesley Snipes black. That's what the phrase should be. Something like that. If you can't do the time, don't do the crime. But what if you can do the time? Uh... Well, you still shouldn't do the crime. So what was the point of even mentioning whether or not I can do the time? Especially since it doesn't make any difference at all. So what should the phrase be? Irregardless of whether you can do the time or not, don't do the crime. Right? You've made your bed, now lie in it. Right, this is stupid, yeah? It's basically saying, you caused this situation, now deal with it. But the comparison with the bed is not the same thing, right? No one makes a bed with the intention of never lying in it again, right? So you don't need to say the now lie in it part, right? Stupid. Unnecessary. It's redundant, right? It's like saying, you've made your sandwich, now eat it. Well, of course I was going to eat the fucking sandwich. Why do you think I made it in the first place? I'm not a chef. As if I'm ever going to be like, yo, fuck this bed, man. I'm throwing this bed out. It's broken. I'm never going to lie on this thing again. And then go on to make my bed. The only reason that I would ever make my bed is specifically because I intend to lie in it. What the phrase should be is, look at this shit situation you've caused, you idiot. Now go sort it out. Like having your cake and eating it too. Now listen, I'm not going to lie, right? I don't know what this means. Don't have a fucking clue. I genuinely still do not know what this means, right? Like, what's the point in having cake if you're not going to eat it? Cake is made to be had, man. That is cake's sole purpose. As if there's such a thing as having cake and not eating it. If there is, right, I need to start a rent a cake business. Where all you do is people rent a cake just to look at it or something. I don't know. And if people eat it, I'll be like, Oi! Oi, mate! You ate some of the cake, what the hell? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Have you not heard the phrase, mate? You won't be getting your deposit back. What it should be... Like, if I'm honest, I don't know. Cause I, I don't even know what it means, so I can't say, can I? Live every day as if it were your last. This is 
Horrible advice. I can think of a few people that I would probably kill if I knew today was my last day and that I would be dying tomorrow. And so do you. And not only that, right? There are a few people out there who, without doubt, will have you on that list. So this is not advice that you want to be giving out, right? Some people might decide that gambling their life savings away would be a good way to spend their last day. It's not like I'm going to be around tomorrow to live the consequences, so fuck it. And it's my last day. I might as well go and tell my boss to go fuck himself and that he should suck it. So don't do this and stop saying it. What the phrase should be, right? You're most probably not going to die tomorrow, so don't behave as though you will. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. Unless it's muscular dystrophy, then you definitely won't get stronger. You will get much, much weaker. Now listen, I'm not an idiot, right? I know what it means. It means mentally stronger, right? But again, no. Back when I was like 13 years old, right, I watched The Blair Witch Project, which is not even that scary a horror movie anyways, right? And that fucked me up. For years, if I was going upstairs to bed at night and it was dark, I could not switch the light off and go upstairs. I had to go upstairs, put the light on, come back downstairs, put the light off and then go back upstairs. That fucked me up as a kid. Didn't make me stronger at all. What the phrase should be is, what doesn't kill you may or may not make you stronger. Results may vary. What you don't hear can't hurt you. Stealth ninjas. You won't hear them, they'll kill you. Okay, let me paint you a picture, right? Imagine this. Oh no, mate, your cat died, did it? Oh no, no, I'm sorry to hear that. Here, have this, just to let you know how much I care. You be like, what is this, mate? To say you don't give a rat's ass doesn't make sense because when do you give a rat's ass? When you care about something, do you give a rat's ass? No, man. And do you know what? Forget rat's ass. I just, I don't get the whole giving thing, man. Like, I don't give a rat's ass. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. Like, what? That makes no sense, man. And why your rat's ass? If you want to give me an ass to show you care, right? Give me JLo's ass. So instead of I don't give a rat's ass, what it should be is I don't care. Simple. Alright, now listen, it's not a phrase, right? But the word extraordinary is stupid. If you go to a restaurant and order something that's extra spicy, that just means that it's very spicy, right? So using the same logic, one would imagine that something extraordinary was just very ordinary, right? No, that's not what it means at all. It means the exact opposite. The word makes no sense. Now, who made up this word? Idiot. You're an extra idiot. What the word should be is totally unordinary. You made it through the course. Fantastic. So if you paid attention, to avoid coming across as an idiot to your friends and your peers, right? All you have to do is make sure you avoid saying these phrases. Or don't. Fuck it. Do whatever you want. I don't give a rat's ass. Can someone please explain to me how to tip in America? Because I don't get it, right? For example, in England, where I'm from, tipping is seen as optional. And to an extent, right, it's seen as a convenience. Like if I'm eating out and my bill came to £48.31, I'll just leave £50 on the table. Or more realistically, I'd pretend like I forgot my wallet at home and I'd hope my friend leaves £50 on the table. But again, the tipping's more of a convenience. Like, fuck the 169 change, do you know what I mean? I just want to get up from our table, get in my car and go home. I don't care about the 169, right? But in America, it seems like tipping is pretty much fucking mandatory. And not only is it mandatory, but you get judged if you don't. Like, people will actually think that you're cheap or an asshole for not leaving a tip. Like, for example, did you just have a great date with a girl that you really like, but forgot to leave a tip? Well, congratulations, mate. She now thinks you're a dick. I don't get the problem. I ate at your restaurant and the bill came to $20, alright? Therefore, you asked me for $20, and as per your exact request, I gave you $20. And I'm somehow an asshole for that. How did that make me an asshole? If I gave you a $20 gift card, then I'd understand why I'm an asshole, right? But this is $20 cash. What the fuck are you mad for? 
you're basically mad because art didn't just give you more money for no reason. Because that's what tipping is. It's just giving people free money, isn't it? Like, why would people want to do that? How the fuck did the practice of giving people free money for no reason whatsoever become so popular? Like, what, what's wrong with us? And the thing that makes even less sense, right, is that in most parts of the world, we pretty much only do it at restaurants. What makes restaurants so special? Why don't we do it anywhere else? Like, for example, whenever I get my electricity bill or my phone bill, right, I pay exactly the amount stated on it. And what's more than that, right, I would not dream of paying those fuckers more, right? Not a penny, not a penny more. So given that, why do people always pay extra when the restaurant gives us a bill? That doesn't make any sense. And also, right, it's the norm to tip at every single restaurant. Like, it's not just the small mom and pop's restaurants, right? I could go to one of Gordon Ramsay's rip-off restaurants in London with it charging 30 fucking quid for an appetizer the size of your balls and I would still be expected to leave a fucking tip to this millionaire restaurateur. How did this shit become the norm? But listen, I might be missing something, right? Let's hear him out, right? Let's give him a chance. So tell me, Gordon, you rich twat, why should people tip? Let's hear some of his reasons. Who the fuck is this? If we provide good service, you should leave a tip. No, no, no. Fuck off, mate. When you go to the grocery store to buy food, if the cashier is nice to you, you never leave her a fucking tip, do you? Exactly. So for some reason, the system's like this. Grocery store, no tip. But restaurant, tip. But waiters and waitresses don't earn enough. It's not my fucking responsibility to pay their bastard salary, is it? That's their bosses! Complain to him that you don't get paid enough for fuck's sake. Not me! But great! They work hard. They deserve a tip. Listen, I used to work as a teacher, right? Not only did I work hard, but I worked hard as fuck. And with all due respect, my job as a teacher was a lot more important than any job in the restaurant industry. But despite that, right? How come no one ever gave me a fucking tip? Huh? No, no beef, no more, nigga. And I used to work with some right little shits. By the way, I'm not making this up, right? And I'm not exaggerating. But back when I was teaching, right? One of the students that I used to teach literally had a reputation for masturbating in class. I swear to God, I went to help this kid once and his fucking flies wide open for anyone who wanted to see his 11-year-old cock and bollocks. Fantastic. I had to put up with wankers like that. Literally. And you think you deserve a tip for putting on a fake smile for me and carrying my curly fries from the kitchen to my table? Fuck off, love. If anyone deserves a tip out of the two of us, it's me. See who's this page of me and why. But here's the thing, right? Despite everything I've said in this video so far, I would recommend that overall, you should still probably leave a tip. What? But rude. After saying all of that. Why? Because, right, these people are the people who make your food. If you don't tip, you'll soon build a reputation as being that guy who doesn't tip. And do you know what will happen after they see that guy who doesn't tip come into the restaurant again? Exactly! You'll get your food spat in. Or even worse... Because realistically, a tip isn't really a reward for good service. Tipping is more of a, please don't spit in my food the next time bribe. So if there's a restaurant that you like, and that you want to go to regularly, you better fucking tip! It's my nigga pop from the barber shop. And, if there's a restaurant that you already go to regularly, but don't tip enough at, sorry to tell you mate, but odds are you've probably had more of the chef's saliva in your mouth than your fucking girlfriend's. Yeah, but, it's not just in restaurants, right? In some places like America, tipping gets even fucking worse. For any newcomers to America, you might be asking yourselves, who are the people to tip me? As far as I know, it's your waiter or waitress, your taxi driver, and even your fucking pizza delivery man. What? My taxi driver and my pizza delivery man? That's so random. And I'll have to tip the valet guy as well. By the way, America, why is valeting even a thing? I'm not gonna give you a fucking tip for parking my car, mate. I can park my own car, thanks. Seriously, fuck eating in America, man. If I want to eat food, I'll have to tip the person serving me. 
If I want to eat the food at home instead, I have to tip the fucker delivering it to me. If I want to eat out, I have to tip the bastard that drives me there. And if I drive there myself, I have to tip the retard who drives it 10 fucking yards and parks it for me. Jesus Christ, man. I think I'll just go hungry and starve instead. Me for my cream and it ain't a dream thing. But here's something that I don't understand at all. To leave a tip has now become somewhat of a standard, all right? But to not leave a tip is seen as some sort of powerful statement. Gee, there's Luke not tipping on account of poor service. I'm out. That's not a statement of any sort at all. Oh, this restaurant is the worst. My food took two hours to arrive. The waitress was rude. When I asked for a refill, the waiter pissed in my glass and my son had an allergic reaction and is now dead because the peanut free salad had peanuts in it. Right, that does it. No gift of free money for you. Ha <laughs> ha! Revenge is sweet. How is that a statement? Do you know what I do when I get bad service from a restaurant? I don't just not leave a tip, right? I fucking dine, I fucking dash, and I fucking never go back there again. Fuck tipping. I got the calico with the black talent. But here's the craziest thing about tipping. As far as society is concerned, right? Even on special occasions like birthdays and anniversaries, I have to give my loved ones like my friends and my family gift cards instead of money because cash is not seen as an acceptable gift to give someone, right? But I'm expected to give random people like my waitress and my taxi driver, who I don't know at all, free cash for no reason whatsoever. That's fucking retarded, man. That is so fucking stupid. Who thought this stupid system up? And also, right, even after having said some of these what might be considered logical arguments against the concept of tipping, it's such a standard nowadays that I bet plenty of you watching this video are just thinking, you're such a cheap fucking bastard grade. Well, in that case, fuck tipping and fuck you as well. Three, four. All the best things on earth start with the letters AC, man. Things like air conditioning, alternating current, Assassin's Creed, and arse cracks. AC things are amazing, man. But then along came autocorrect and fucked everything up. Yo, as a whole, right? Fuck autocorrect, man. I hate that shit. It was invented specifically to correct mistakes, right? But all it does is make them. Listen, someone needs to fix autocorrect. And guess what? I found the solution, mate. No bullshit. And this is not the first time that I've fixed a real world problem either. I did this in my automated phone menus video too. So listen up, autocorrect companies. In this video, I'm going to quickly go over some actual mistakes that autocorrects made for me in the past, right? And then I'm going to tell you, once and for all, how to fix autocorrect. Get up, get on up. Now listen, don't get me wrong, right? As a whole, autocorrect is good. It definitely helps out when I'm drunk as fuck and trying to put together a coherent sentence, right? But it is far from perfect. Listen, I think everyone has had stuff like shit get autocorrected to ship, dick get changed to sick, and I have said what the duck more times than I care to count. Like Alright, now listen, I finally upgraded my Samsung S2, right? To a Samsung S5. Because fuck Apple. And I think that we all know that while autocorrect is bad enough already, right? Autocorrect is the fucking worst right after you get a new phone. And since I got my S5, right? I've been keeping track of the mistakes. On top of correcting a bunch of words that are already correct and don't need correcting in the first place, autocorrect gave me two mistakes that are fucking horrible, man. They were horrible. Let me tell you the stories. Get up. Okay, so every now and then, right, I reply to people who DM me on my Instagram. And once, not gonna lie, a really good looking girl messaged me. I know, right? A female talking to me? Who would have thought? I told you I wasn't gay, dad. Ah, oh, so anyways, right? She's all like, hey, great. I'm a big fan. Love your videos. I want your chin. So I'm like, holy shit, man. She wants the chin. Right, so obviously I put the moves on her, right? And I say, Yo, shout it what to do, man. She, you're looking fine. Right? And then I asked her, where are you from? Right? I asked her location. She said, I'm from Canada. Right? To which I replied, oh, wow, you're really far. At which point, autocorrect decides to step in 
and changes my message from wow you're really far to wow you're really far. But you, what are you doing all correct? Okay, so I apparently replied with wow you're really far, right? To which she replied, nothing. What the fuck, man? She stopped talking to me all because of all correct. Thanks a lot, you cunt. Like a sex machine. And mistake number two, right? Oh my fucking god, man. Okay, so in short, right? I have a mate whose grandma is a bit ill. My mate always talks about her like she's some sweet old lady, right? But she's really not. She's not like the most racist lady ever. And she's like a thousand years old. Think Queen Elizabeth I if she was still alive today, right? And was more racist than Keemstar. Okay, so anyways, so they're planning some big family get-together, right? But at the time, it was looking like his grandma wasn't going to be able to make it because she'd been in the hospital. Okay, so anyways, me and my mate are just talking. Probably about some intelligent shit like politics or philosophy or something. Right? And he tells me, Hey, great! Guess what, man? To which I replied, What? At which point he says, Mate, my grandma's feeling better and she might actually make it to that family thing. To which I reply, Yeah? Hopefully she does! At which point all correct decides to step in and changes my message from yeah, hopefully she does, to yeah, hopefully she dies! What? Are you trying to get me killed, autocorrect? What the hell, autocorrect? You're supposed to be helping me out, man. Not fucking me up like this. And some of the mistakes it makes, man. Fucking hell. You could be trying to say some over-the-top romantic shit like I think I've been hit by Cupid's arrow. I fucking love you. But then all correct will come in and change it to, I think you look shit. You stupid cow. I fucking loathe you. I've had enough of this shit, man. And I'm sure you guys have too. So here, let me tell you how to fix auto correct. Get up, get on up. Get up. Okay, now listen, auto correct app companies. This is what I want. Okay, listen, whenever I'm on my phone and my keyboard's up and I'm typing, right? I want my microphone to activate and for all correct to start listening. Okay, now listen, exercise for you lot, right? Now imagine that you're my autocorrect app, right? Imagine you're listening through the mic and you hear this. If you hear that right, you know that everything's good and no mistakes have been made so far, okay? Right. However, instead of that, right, imagine you hear this. Just have a listen and see if you can spot the difference. Fuck! Did you hear the difference, mate? If you listened closely enough, right, you should have been able to hear a FUCK being said. As an autocorrect app, right, this is your subtle sign that your last autocorrection was crap, right? If you hear the user say FUCK or SHIT or anything else like that, right, assume that the last correction was a mistake and fucking undo it. Do this, right, and we can make autocorrect mistakes a thing of the past. It's as easy as that, mate! All correct apps, make that happen! Now listen, again, no one should have to lose family or close friends, or even worse, random girls hitting them up on Instagram just because they all correct wants to call them fat or tell them that you hope their family members die. That's not cool, auto correct. Not cool. Right, now listen, I've told you what to do. Auto correct companies, make it happen! Now listen, that's all I wanted to say, right? My name is Grade A Under A, and I am a genius! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> listen, real talk, right? Why is money not seen as an acceptable gift to give? Like, who the fuck would complain if they were given money? Now listen, even I'll agree, right? There is zero thought that goes into giving money as a gift, okay? Absolutely none. But for fuck's sake, man, it's money! And besides, right, finding someone a gift that they actually like is really hard. And it shows! Right after Christmas, if you go on eBay or Gumtree or whatever, you will see a shitload of things being sold for really cheap with the words unwanted gift written next to it. Like, fuck you, man! You can't sell my gift! When you give a gift, I thought it was the thought that counts. I thought how much it was worth was not important. There are so many things on eBay after Christmas that say unwanted gift. But do you know what you never see listed on eBay? Unwanted £20 note. 
money is always appreciated me, right? So who the fuck is making an issue out of accepting money? Just take it for fuck's sake. Or give it to me. But here's the part that really doesn't make sense. Okay, so for some reason, the world has essentially decided that money isn't an acceptable gift to give, right? I mean, that alone is stupid enough in itself, right? But whatever. Okay, so while I can't give you a £20 note as a gift, what I can do is spend that £20 on a £20 gift card and give you that instead. Do people not see how fucking stupid that is? And even worse than that, all a gift card is, right, is money that you can't spend wherever you want. Given that I can currently spend this £20 wherever I want, why would I then go and restrict it to only a few selected shops? Perhaps even one by getting a gift card. What's the point of that? And also, just to point this out, right, a £20 gift card is not worth £20, right? Not even close. Here, let me explain it like this. Imagine I owed you £20, right? And as I was paying you back, instead of £20, I'll hand you this. A £20 gift card. Would you consider that as me having paid off my debt? Or would you say something along the lines of, What the f- What, what is this, mate? I don't want a £20 gift card, you cheeky cunt. Now give me £20 cash before I bash your fucking head in, you big chin piece of shit. Exactly. Because a gift card is worth much less than the monetary amount stated on it. A lot less. I can only use this shit in one store. I cannot buy fish and chips at my local chippy with this. My pub won't let me pay for my apple teenies with this. And I can't pay my fucking rent with this shit. That's such a strict rule. Why would you impose that rule on yourself? And even worse than that, right? Hookers don't accept them, and nor does my crack dealer. So what good is this to me then? Actually, no. I spoke too soon. It's not completely useless at all. Do you know what it is good for, me? Wiping my fucking ass. So here. Why don't you go and enjoy your gift card, since it's such a good gift and all? You cunt. Exchanging your money for a gift card is like throwing money away for fuck's sake. Literally. A New York Post article estimated that between 2008 and 2014, $44 billion worth of gift cards went unredeemed. Which shows just how much of a good gift they really are, doesn't it? After hearing that, do you still want to go out and buy one as a gift for someone? No, no greed! So can we all do ourselves a favour and stop wasting money on these fucking stupid gift cards, please? And if after hearing all of that, you still feel the need to go out and buy someone a gift card, do them a favour and just give them the money instead, along with a piece of paper linking them to this video. Okay, last thing, right? This is seriously the fucking coolest thing that has happened to me as a YouTuber, okay? About 8 months ago, I made a video called Life's Hardest Questions. If you want to go and watch the video, click here, right? But if you can't be asked, I asked a question about sweet corn. Basically, right? You know how sometimes when you eat sweet corn, when you go for shit later on, you'll sometimes see perfectly untouched kernels of sweet corn in your shit, right? So I asked, if you were to take a laxative to clear everything out of you, right? But then you ate nothing but sweet corn, but you didn't even chew it, you just swallow it whole with water, would you shit out like perfectly untouched sweet corn and would it look like it just came out of the can well someone actually fucking did it this guy is a fucking badass okay this guy's name is willie sochko who i will now call professor sochko he took one for the team and he went and actually fucking did it i'm not gonna ruin the results for you right but if you want to go and watch it click here and check it out all right so this video is dedicated to you professor sochko I hereby award you the very first Grade A Ig Nobel Prize in Biology for your research on the effect of the human digestive system on sweet corn. I never fucking thought that someone would actually go and do it, but you actually went and did it. God bless you, Professor Sochko, you fucking crazy yet hilarious bastard. Enjoy your £20 gift card. As I'm sure is the case with everyone, right? 
I am not particularly fond of password stipulations, man. You go on the website to sign up and they've got stipulations like, Oh, your password must contain at least one capital letter. And at least two numbers. One of which must be 69. And it can't use the letter H. Alright, fair enough. They're not that bad. But I think that having any rule is bad, right? Now listen, I'm not a complete idiot, right? It's pretty obvious why they have them. They have the rules to ensure your password isn't easily guessable. But all it does is raises the chances that you're going to forget the password yourself. Listen, with all due respect, website, don't get involved with my password, man. That's my business, alright? Like, even if my username is something like, what is 10 plus 10, and my password is 20, it's my fault. Don't get involved. Like what? Can I not be trusted to make a password without your supervision, mate? It's insulting, man. To have these rules on setting your own password is not the smartest idea, is it? A vital property of a password is that you can remember it, right? Because a password is pretty fucking useless if you forget it, isn't it? However, these stipulations make you change and alter your password slightly, sometimes to a point where it isn't memorable anymore and you fucking forget it. But great, why do you care? Why are you so passionate about this shit? Because I've had it happen to me, myself. In the past, I have forgotten a password myself because of these stupid rules, right? People generally have one single password that they use for all of their password needs, right? I used to have a password, right? Which was... Lick, lick, lick. It's a nice, lazy password that you can enter with just your right hand and you don't have to move it all because all the letters are bunched together, right? Some sites didn't care what your password was and I was allowed to have lick, 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 right? Some sites started asking for a capital letter, hence capital L, ick, lick, lick, was born. However, before, some sites started asking for a number, hence lick, 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 zero came about. And then I started looking for graduate employment and in those sites, a lot of them asked for capital letters and numbers, hence... Capital L, it lick lick zero came to be. Now look at this shit. Just look at this shit. I started with one password and now I've got four. And things can happen that force you to make completely new ones. Right, like for example, when you're on your laptop and you're putting your password in, and after you've put your password in, you turn to the person that you're with and they're not facing another direction. What's wrong with you, mate? That's password etiquette, you bastard. It's like if I was entering my PIN number at an ATM machine, you don't look, do you? You turn away. So it's the same thing here. When I'm entering my password, turn away, you dickhead. So because this arsehole didn't turn away, right, I have to go and change my password on every site where I used it because I'm paranoid that he now knows my password. But let's be honest, I can't be asked to change every single one of my passwords, right? So what I'll do is I'll just change the main ones like eBay, PayPal and maybe Facebook. So now the number of passwords that I have has risen. Do you see what I'm saying, right? Don't judge me, right? Years back, I used to go on a website called Neopets. The stipulation about adding a number in your password is a really common one, right? However, the website Neopets randomly started requiring all users to have not one, but two fucking numbers in their password, right? As a direct result of this, I lost access to me old Neopets account. You dicks. And another thing, right? When you're signing up for a website, you will commonly see this password strength thing, right? Like, this makes no sense to me. You are a non-human computerized system, right? How are you gonna judge how strong my password is? Now listen, this is a literal example. I did this like just yesterday. If you go to gmail.com to sign up for an email account and you enter your email address as sloppy kisses from grandma 69420 at gmail.com and choose your password as baby baby123, it will tell you that this password is weak. How is that weak? How is that a weak password? On what basis are you saying that that's weak? Like, who the fuck would have that as one of their first guesses? As if some hacker was gonna try and hack that email and be like, Hmm, sloppy kisses from grandma 69420, huh? What could the password be? Let's try salad tossing 42. <laughs> Shit, right, no good, okay? So how about nipple baby 007? <laughs> no? Okay, well then the only possibility left must be baby baby one two three. Bingo! Now I would genuinely be shocked if someone guessed that given a month. I really would, right? And by the way, 
Baby, baby, one, two, three is considered a weak password. But in case you wanted an example of a strong password for sloppy kisses from grandma sixty nine four twenty at gmail dot com, according to Gmail, a strong password would be sloppy kisses. Can't get stronger than that, right? Again, that's an actual example that I tried just yesterday. So I don't have a clue what's going on with this strength of password shit. All in all, I don't mind all of this stuff, right? If it wasn't compulsory, like I don't mind you making a suggestion of saying, "All right, they're me." You might just want to dash in a capital letter or some numbers in that password of yours. Just saying, mate. But when they say, "Oi, yo, that password's not gonna fly here, mate," I demand that you put a capital letter in there somewhere. That's when I decide to express my dissatisfaction in the form of a YouTube video, a maybe interpretive dance. Fucking shush! Alright, listen, listen! Naked pictures are not allowed on YouTube, right? So keep this quiet. Do you guys want to see a pair of great tits? You do, right? Ha <laughs> ha! You old dog. There you go! Nice naming system, animal scientists! Calling these birds tits. Grow up, you immature bastards! Animal scientists are so stupid, man! Who looked at a whale and decided that it was a mammal and not a fish? Like, you don't need a brain to see this, right? It's clearly a fucking fish, man! It lives in the water, it has fins, and its body is shaped like this. That means it's a fish, mate! Um, actually, its babies are born alive, so that makes it a mammal. Who cares? That is not how you should go about classifying animals, mate. How its babies are born. Mammals are things like humans and dogs and lions, alright? Does the whale look like it fits in with these lot? Does it? Or does it look more at home among these other fish? Point proven. You lot are stupid, man. Which idiot looked at a frog and a toad and thought, Shit, they're different, are they? No, they're not, alright? They look like twins for fuck's sake. Except one's got dermatitis. But the worst one, by far, crocodiles and alligators. It looks like a copy-paste of the same picture. So what exactly is the difference between a crocodile and an alligator, you might be wondering, right? Now there's a bunch of stupid ones, but there are two main ones. One of them is the shape of their snout, which is stupid because to me they look close enough, but to animal scientists, this slight difference is apparently more than enough to warrant a whole new animal being classified, right? And if you watch this clip, you will see the animal expert in the video mention the absolute fucking worst reason ever to warrant the need to classify a completely new animal. Just have a watch, right? Yeah, well, one of thanks the ways... for bringing it here to the television show. <laughs> if you look at the fourth tooth down Yeah, there... get in there with your finger and show me. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. That fourth I, tooth I can't sticks tell. Up. I need to see specifically which it tooth. Sticks up from the bottom there. That's one, one really good way to tell alligators or crocodiles. The fourth tooth sticks out. Not the third. Not the fifth. The fucking fourth. What? You cannot be serious, man. That is not a reason to classify a new animal. So based on this, right, my assumption is that when some crocodile who's in need of some orthodontal treatment comes along and has his third tooth sticking out instead of his fourth, rather than just saying, oh look, that crocodile's got some fucked up teeth, hasn't he? These bastard animal scientists will look at that and go, I found a new species! No, you haven't! That boy needs therapy. Animal scientists are shit with colour. It's kind of like with grapes, okay? Now have a look at these, right? These kind of grapes are called black grapes, obviously, right? These kind of grapes are called red grapes, obviously, right? And these are called white grapes. What? Excuse me? They're not fucking white at all, are they? Who looked at these grapes and thought, oh, these are some lovely white grapes, aren't they? Who named these grapes, man? The KKK? But fuck grapes, right? We're talking about animals. You also get things like the Great White Shark, which is way more grey than it is white. Again, wonder who named that animal, right? And really quickly, let's just have a look at these. This is a red squirrel, this is a red fox, and this is a red panda. What do you spot wrong here? 
Yeah, exactly, right? They're not fucking red at all, are they? They're all orange. Now, how did, how did you guys not spot that? You lot are scientists. You're supposed to be smart, man. And most of you nerds wear glasses as well, right? So your eyesight should be perfect. You're a nut. You're crazy in the coconut. And by the way, just to pick on this, not only is the red panda not red, it's not a fucking panda either, is it? It's a ferret. Here's a dog, a fox, a coyote, and a jackal. They look the fucking same, don't they? But despite that, right, animal scientists say that they have enough differences between them to be classed as completely different animals. So if these four look different enough to be classed as different animals, why aren't dogs? Look how different dogs can look, man. These are all classed as the same animal. Where's the consistency? <laughs> As a sheep. There are too many species, man. Seriously. Like, for example, let's look at ants, alright? Ants are such a simple organism. Three blobs for a body, another blob for a head, six legs, and those feely things at the front, right? Boom, ant. Simple as you can get. But even though ants are such a simple animal with so few things you could change about it, animal scientists have somehow managed to define 11,800 different species of ant. What the f- No, no, man. That's ridiculous, okay? I refuse to accept that there are 11,800 completely distinct types of ant, whereby I would look at any one of them and say to myself, Oh, shit! No, you're right. That species of ant is nothing like the other 11,799 species. Have a look for yourself, right? How are they finding so many different ways to distinguish one species from the other? It's getting ridiculous, right? Now listen, I did my research for this, right? Looked on Wikipedia. If we take weevils as an example, right? Some of the criteria which could warrant a new species are when those front feeler things have a bend in them, if specifically the sixth and seventh stripe of the arse blob part has some type of vents on it, and if the rim of cartilage forming the shoulder socket is disjoint from the head plate. Those are so fucking random and someone explain to me why. What's the fucking point? Like for example, as a scientist, if you're able to say that you discovered a new species of something, is that considered impressive or something like that? Like it'll make you famous or it'll help you pick up women at the bar or something. Or laboratory, whatever. Someone please explain to me why the creating of so many species. And he also made false teeth. But listen, right? If you think that all of the examples in this video have been bad, which you should, by the way, right? I haven't even gone over the worst one. If you go to Google Images and search for mountain chicken, you will see the number one stupidest named animal ever. Right, now go on, go and Google it. Video's over. Well, go on then, the fuck you stood here for? Go Google it! <laughs> Mate, how stupid are those zodiac constellations? You know the ones I'm talking about, right? Like, how are you gonna look up at the night sky, right? And with a straight face, tell me that this is a crab, this is a bull, that this is clearly a half goat, half fish mermaid thing, and this... It's a fucking sheep! What?! Seriously, right? What the hell were ancient astrologers smoking when they came up with the constellations? And more importantly, right? What the hell are we smoking in 2021 by keeping them? Listen, I think it's about time that we updated these constellations, aren't we, right? And have things that use a bit of common sense and actually look like the patterns in their constellations. Do you know what I mean? That's a fucking great idea, isn't it? So let's do exactly that right now! But before I tell you what the constellations are now going to be officially changed to, right? I thought we'd play a little game! And you can play along at home too! Okay, so rules of the game, right? We're going to have you pretend that you were one of those crack-smoking astrologers back in the 1700s or whatever, and let's see what creative and retarded shit you see when you see them! It's like an astrological Rorschach test! Listen, pause the video right now and have a look at how stupid these constellations are for yourself, right? And write a comment down below saying what you see when you see them, right? Like this. See how many of them you get right. <laughs> 
because I'm going to tell you what they actually are. Anyways, without further ado, right, I present to you the all-new 2021 Official Constellations. Okay, so I hope you've submitted your answers in the comment below, right? Yes, even if you're watching on your phone, dickhead, right? All right, let's see how many you got correct, mate. Here are the new constellations. Cancer, the crab. Mate, how the, mate, 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 how the fuck is this a crab, right? Listen, I could understand if this represented a crab's pincer, right? But look at this shit. Like, no, mate, absolutely not, right? So cancer is now... Stick man without arms or a head. Taurus, the bull. Clearly not a bull, mate, but chromosome. And more specifically, right, chromosome number three. Gemini, the twins. Cock. It's a cock, mate. Aries, the ram. <coughs> no, no longer a ram, mate, stupid. But more fittingly, Aries is now... A fucking lion. Leo, the lion. <coughs> lion? Who the fuck looked at this and saw a lion? No, mate, because from now on... Duck! Virgo, the virgin, LOL. I know it's alright, look at these stars, yeah? Who decides how the lines are connected between the stars? Do you know what I mean? Right makes no sense. Could have been this, could have been this, but no, they chose this. Well, I say there needs to be an extra line here, right? Which gives us our new constellation... SpongeBob! Jesus Christ, mate, this video's taking the piss, this is, this is getting long. I've got shit to do. So let's hurry this the fuck up. Libra, the scales. Triangle with legs. Scorpio, the scorpion. Hydra monster. Sagittarius, the half horse, half man shooting a bow and arrow. Listen, I was looking at this one for a while, right? Because it's such a weird pan, right? Doesn't even look like anything. So anyways, I'm looking at it, right? And then it hit me. And if you look carefully, right, you see that this one is clearly a half horse, half man shooting a bow and arrow. Credit where credit's due, right? This one's spot on. Capricorn, the stupid half goat, half fish mermaid thing. A fucking triangle. And down to our final two, which I do say so myself, right, are my favorite two. Aquarius, the cunt pouring water. Tampon? And finally, Pisces, the fishes. Sperm! And there you have it! The all new and improved 2021 Accurate Constellations! <laughs> so all you women and gay guys who are into your astrology and all that dumb shit, right? You no longer use these terms, you now use these terms. You're welcome! Uh, by the way, right? I checked the astrological charts, and since Gemini has come into Uranus's orbit, that means that if you like this video and subscribe, it might be less than six months until my next video. Uh, anyways, peace.